In a northern suburb of Monrovia, one of Africa's most vicious civil wars has burst open with renewed violence. After a two-year truce, Charles Taylor's patriotic front, the NPFL, tried to capture the country's main port. They want to evict the self-styled provisional government from its fragile base in the capital. In a conflict which seems more like a blood feud, the fighters are often young orphans, like this 12-year-old boy. He's fighting to revenge the death of his father, killed by opposition forces in the last war. But the nature of the civil war is changing. The NPFL's main enemy now is the seven-nation West African peacekeeping force. On the horizon, heavily armed Nigerian jets on a bombing raid over rebel positions around Monrovia. In a grotesque reversal of its supposed mandate, the peacemakers of Ekamog have gone on the offensive. Far from bringing peace, the Ekamog soldiers have simply aggravated this conflict and added to the casualties. And they've increased the rebels' cannabis fueled determination to defend the 90% of Liberia they currently hold. I don't want to listen to no ceasefire for any radio. I'm on a year to listen to, to my leader. If he comes here and tells me, say, ceasefire, I'm going to ceasefire. How why do you copy me? But we are our brothers. When they say ceasefire, we win the ceasefire. We will fight to the last man. I will get weapons from wherever I have to get it. If the Pentagon's got some, please give me some. I'll use it. We are not a military group here. I'm not a soldier. What we seek to do is to destroy these military dictatorships around Africa. And that's that child still a virus. If the civilians can throw out the army, wow, we are in trouble. That's that virus. Well, I love it. At the Firestone rubber plantation yeah. north of Monrovia, there's more evidence of Ekamog's growing involvement in the war against Taylor. A month ago, Nigerian peacekeeping planes bombed and strafed the factory, site of the world's largest plantation. 41 people were killed, more than 100 were injured. The jets dropped cluster bombs on the workers' quarters as well as the factory. The American director can't understand why. It's horrible. It's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a devastating experience uh, uh, to witness something like this. I would find it hard to think that what we are engaged in here would have any uh, value other than something uh, that would be to the well-being of the, of the world. The Firestone Hospital, short of supplies and staff, can only treat the minor injuries. The United States has warned Ekamog that it risks losing international support if it attacks civilian targets. Even so, the US has given at least $10 million to the peacekeeping force. More is thought to be on the way. Ekamog defends the raid. They say the factory is still a base for Taylor's rebel forces. Our bombing raids concentrate on lines of supplies and concentration of the fighters. And that we are free to do wherever we think there are ammunition dumps and other strategic war materials. It's all part of the defensive measures. That, and we are very free to do that. Does that include the Firestone factory and the residential area where the Firestone works? If the Firestone factory was used as a dump, by all means, we dump bloody blow it. On the Monrovia front line, within view of Taylorland, are members of the AFL, the Armed Forces of Liberia who, in theory, are trying to contain the rebel army. They're the soldiers of murdered President Samuel Doe, deposed by Taylor two years ago. They were supposed to have handed in their weapons to the peacekeepers, as was the NPFL. Instead, the AFL around Monrovia are still armed, expecting a fresh attack by Taylor's forces at any moment. Here, too, the monitoring force has got involved, helping to repel recent NPFL offensives. They are defending their position too. So they are not aligned for us. They are defending their position because if they don't do it, they, they, you know from the initial state, their position were attacked, so they know why it is. So you need each other? 
Exactly so. The peacekeepers of Ekamog deny working with the AFL, but on the ground, it's clear that the so-called neutral force has swapped its white helmets for green ones. At this frontline checkpoint, Ghanaians from the peacekeeping force work side by side with the Liberian army. It's as if the UN joined forces with one of the warring factions in Bosnia. Fatal to any idea of impartiality, Ekamog though insists they're keeping their distance. We have a Ghanaian, a Ghanaian unit in that place that is somewhere distinct from where I mean, AFA is fighting, so they're not fighting alongside. Would you be overrun by Taylor's people if you didn't have the backup of the AFL and Ulima represent? That is implying that AFA is fighting, I mean, fighting alongside with me, which I've said no. But we have seen him right uh, there on the front line with your troops for a while behind. That will be the end of the interview. Commando! Taylor's NPFL say the peacekeepers by propping up the interim government, are keeping them from victory. His bizarrely dressed battalions in corsets and crucifixes will only disarm and face elections if the UN takes over the peacekeeping operation. With a reduced echo mark, removal of artillery, removal of the jet fighter bombers, and a mixing up of the forces with UN observers here neutral to supervise their activities here, we could go right into elections. I want elections. But as the refugees fleeing the fighting know, peace in Liberia is further away than ever. Among the casualties, five American nuns, reportedly killed by Taylor's troops last month, during a gunfight. Eyewitness evidence suggests this was their car. Liberia's civil war sends out a bleak message to the international community. Ekamog was supposed to mark the start of self-help for Africa's political problems. Instead, it's just made them worse. Unless there's more direct international intervention, Liberia's pain looks set to continue.